Okay. <laughs> That's totally going to be the beginning of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm producing gold tonight. Oh. Gold. This just reminds me that when we don't get on the microphones together that frequently, we do, in fact, get rusty. <laughs> So what you're saying is that no amount of uh, depression and um, ennui should keep us from our potting? It just seems like you're not potting? present in the room with us, Rex. I, <laughs> you're, you're, can you not hear me? <laughs> you know, you got a little knob there. <clears throat> well. Well. <clears throat> welcome back, guys. Hi. This this is a burn barrel. It this is. is. A burn, yeah. We are around burn, burn, burn the chair. burn barrel. And burn in a couple chair. weeks, we're heading out to sit around fire again in the great northern wastes. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're going to go see some friends. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to go have ourselves a little uh, little friendly beach burn, um, getting smaller by the day. <laughs> <laughs> but bigger in my heart. Uh I'm really excited to get back up to Oregon again to the one spot in Oregon that's not on fire. Or melting. It's not really on fire. Proverbially. Pr- proverbially. Proverbially. Probably. 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 Probably no, still. On fire. <laughs> yeah. Providentially. Oh, it's going to be like 70 degrees where we're going. That's what it looks like. It's incredible. Mm-hmm. It has also been 70 degrees in Oakland. Uh People on the West Coast, if you don't live in the Bay Area, I'm so sorry. Yeah, it is delightful it's here. Um, weirdly perfect. This is like the nicest summer I've had in Oakland in a long time. Thank you for taking all our heat. Portland, Seattle. Yeah, it's good right now. Tacoma. It's good for oh, us. Oh, Tacoma's got to smell so bad right now. What's up with t- Tacoma? They they named a pickup truck after it. Is it brutal up there? Uh, it it just kind of always smells bad, and now it's very hot, and that never helps things that <laughs> smell bad smell better. I feel like we've had this conversation before. I hope it wasn't on Mike. That would be embarrassing. Look, if you're just always shit talking Tacoma. I will make a Tacoma cast limited series. We can take a trip up to Tacoma, and I, you can be depressed on every corner. What did Tacoma do to you? I just drove through it and was like, ugh. I lived there for a summer? Uh-huh. No. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why you have a chip on your shoulder about that garbage <laughs> hole. It's it's a bad little town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. It's just far enough away from Seattle and Olympia to suck in either direction? Hmm. Real strong feelings about Tacoma. I will say this great, like, produce shopping and food, but I think that just kind of holds true for uh, all of the Seattle Metroplex. I think you're, like, never more than four blocks away from a farm stand organic grocery. Yeah, it seems real verdant up there. Wow, busting out the vocabulary words. I know words that start with V, Beth. Verdant. Yeah. He, He knows... No less than six what is, words associated with green. What is, oh, that's a green word. Uh-huh. That means green. Yeah. Is Overflowing pu- fecund. Okay. Is puce green? Uh, puce is puce. Puce is a. If I'm not mistaken, puce can both be like a, a lemony green as well as a vomity like purpley magenta. Yeah, I think puce is, is like at the purple-red boundary. Puce. I just spelled a pus. <laughs> <laughs> How do you spell puce? P-U-C-E. P-U-C-E. P-U-C-I-F-E-R. Pucifer. A dark red or purple brown color. Dark <laughs> red or purple brown. <laughs> purple brown? It's just ugly. It is pretty ugly. <laughs> I mean, it is a a very accurately named color. Jesus, we're we're like doing puce bits. This I is, know we it's because we are we have, doing shit. Yeah. I'm on my phone I at this point. No, <laughs> I believe it was you who called us here around the burn barrel. Yeah, what did you want to talk about you around had, the burn? You barrel? had a topic. You teased it on the episode that will come out before or after this. <laughs> 
Yeah, well, I also wanted to talk about going camping and like seeing our Burning Man friends. Well, yeah, we did that. We're going camping. Yeah, just, we're going to Oregon. It's going it to be feels cool. weird and longingy to just talk about. So the camping trip. Yeah. yeah, but then we can talk about it later. We will talk about it later. See when we have stories about it. Right. Well, aren't you looking forward to having stories about it? Is that not good content, Beth? Yeah, I am. I'm really looking forward to being out there. Uh, Well, we were prompted by listeners, as happens, uh, as to what our feelings are regarding upcoming on Playa events vis-a-vis BLM restrictions on said events Mm -hmm. and the... uh, resulting minimization of the renegade burn thoughts am i not in the room with you you are in the room with us you're doing a very good job today rex thank you for coming here <laughs> uh why don't I, you why, why why don't you explain a little bit about what the restrictions are and then we will comment on them okay then so the the deal is that the blm sent a response letter to anybody who was applying for a special event permit on Playa saying that they were not going to issue any special event permits during uh, the the Burning Man season and that anybody can come and camp on Playa, but they do not want anything to be built on Playa. Uh, There can be no commercial services on Playa. So things like uh, porta potty and Gray water servicing cannot be had. Uh, water trucks can't come out. Um, there may not be any large scale burns. Uh, any there, there can be campfires, and the campfires need to be elevated six foot off playa uh, with six foot or six si- inches. Yes, six six meters uh, off the playa. Like whoa, 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 whoa. Six meters is a lot. Millimeters. Okay, millimeter. Six, six millimeters. Six six furlongs. <laughs> I'm six hand. It's just six inches so that it's you're not okay. actually burning the right. top yeah, of the Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't scorch some, some yeah. shit. Yeah, and you, and you have to have something under your burn to catch the ash and cinders and what shit. Um, so basically, the there cannot be any kind of and, renegade burn. There can and, be Juplia-like camping. And uh-huh. uh, no guns. No, yes, no guns. And no fireworks. No fireworks. Uh, n- no... Uh, bad driving. Uh, oh yeah, you're not allowed to drive. Really, that's it. Um, Except on the roads. Is that what they said? Or oh, <clears throat> I don't think it's it's that explicit. I think it's just like uh, no unsafe driving that puts people at risk. I think if you drive like two or three miles down Playa and go do some donuts, no one's gonna come after you. But there's mm-hmm. like. Part of the feeling I get here is that this is going to be a ranger thick scene, but that's just my intuition. Right. And not not the kind of rangers that we are, the kind of rangers that they are with the guns and the laws and shit. Yeah, I don't know. I I still want to go check it out, Mm -hmm. but it's, I have no idea. Who knows? I was a lot more scared when I'm like, are there going to be guns? Because you can normally <laughs> take guns out there. Yes. Mm-hmm. And they're they're putting a special ban in place during the Burning Man season where you can't take guns out there. Um, or at least not fire guns. I, out actually, there. I think the text is that you can't have guns away from the verge. What is the verge? Uh, where the, the plants begin. I, I think if you're the kind of person that goes out to... The edge of playa and shoot shit. You can still do that because right, because you're all the way out at the edge of playa. Stop you from having guns in this country. Mm-hmm. Um, and also no vending, so no porta potty drops. Yes, no porta potty drops. No porta potty services. Pack it in, pack it out. No propane. No. What other things? Uh, do yeah, wealthy no, people no get flame served? effects mm-hmm. um, on vehicles. Um, which is boring. Yeah. But I can't wait to see the cool LED effects <laughs> that will be out there this year. That will be fun. Uh, yeah, so I guess barring uh, scheduling conflicts, we'll 
maybe come out for the weekend. Maybe y'all can find us. Maybe we'll have our recorder with us. We should have a flag. We can we can get a flag from the merch shop. Yeah, we we'll get, get a flag. We can get one of those uh, uh, flags. Tapestries? Mm-hmm. We get a tapestry. But we'll, we get two of them, sew them back to back. But we'll just get a flag. They print flags. Not at that shop. We'd have to go somewhere else. Okay. <laughs> it's decided. Reading adjourned. Riveting. <laughs> Thank you for joining us at our burn barrel. <laughs> Do you like this conversation? I mean, I just, like, it... It sound, it'll, I'm worried about cops, and I'm worried about guns, and I'm worried about lack of medical. Mm-hmm. But I still really want to go and see what people are up to. Well, I think if you go out there, you be safe, and you be smart, and not put yourself or anyone else at risk. And you will almost certainly be fine. And if you get sent home, you get sent home. You get sent home, you get sent home. If they get on their bullhorns, and God, how would you trust it? How would you trust anything you heard out there? You know, we've got that new shade structure. We could just get one of those tapestries and, and like, plaster it to the, the front side. Dude, stop telling people all the stuff we got. Listeners, if you are in the market for a uh, Costco carport. broken carport. <laughs> It's missing some of its legs. <laughs> it's, it's really not where I was going. Most was gonna, of its tubes are bent. No, I was gonna, <laughs> oh, those are yeah. car boys at Harbor Freight. I, I just appreciate ha- what bad shape your car barn got into by the time it was it was ready to go. Uh, that thing is still like totally in operational condition as soon as I get some replacement legs. I just <laughs> I haven't done that because. But why, why, why doesn't somebody else just get replacement legs for you? And also get your whole carport out from under the house. <laughs> house meeting adjourned. <laughs> Thank you for coming to our burnt barrel. You had a topic. D-Day like them video games. Yeah, we've been playing games lately. We played games together. We, we've been playing games apart. You've what? been playing games without me, you guys? I invited you. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the board games, yes. We don't always play board games on YouTube. Beth. So you want to talk about games? Yeah, you want to or talk how about to games? crush the uh, overwhelming loneliness and isolation that comes from well on a year of COVID. I I, I will say that during the uh, the bleakest stretch of COVID for me, I spent a, a hell of a lot of time in Night City, and uh, that was pretty great. Um, as glitchy and kind of half-assed in a lot of ways as uh, cyberpunk was. Um, the stakes of the storytelling were always real. Like, every time it came to a big story decision, I I kind of ha- ended up stopping. And But then the timer's timing down. Sometimes. 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 But sometimes you're just staring at, like, two equally horrendous decisions, uh, both of which make absolute perfect sense um and it, it kind of sticks you it's it's good it's well written it, it's not like a stark binary there oh almost never and so, they have nibbles the hairless cat that you can adopt if you figure out how oh they do have so many cute hairless cats around town i didn't even know you could adopt one i totally would have tried yeah i'm not playing with virtual hairless cats i have a hairless cat he you, sleeps with his face on my face sometimes. I love him. He is warm and fleshy and mine. You you play a video game Viking and, and you have all of these convents and monasteries that you could totally raid just like within blocks of here. That's true. And like watching your Ivor play through that game, I have nothing but Which game contempt. is this? I'm sorry. I should be stopping you and slowing you down because. Uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Which is on what platform? All of them. Uh, all of the platforms. All right. Sorry, I don't play video games very much. Yes, you do. But you well, not us play okay, video not very games. much. Yeah. You you played the shit out of Divinity with us. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm not. It's not that I never do. It's just that I I don't. You don't play with the veracity that we do. Yeah. But you're really good at like drinking coffee and getting high and being in the room 
while I, I play video games I, all afternoon. <laughs> and I appreciate that, Beth. I like honestly, I grew up watching my older brother play video games, and mm-hmm. there's something like oddly comforting about watching other people figure out how to do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel that you are oddly comforting as well. Thank you. <laughs> True friends. Um, because while I don't really play them, I'm kind of fascinated by the stories that are being told through video games because it's a different narrative way of the kind of things that you can experience in the sort of story and worlds that you can become aware of is really different than like a written book sometimes. Mm -hmm. And it's different than a movie. And I'm always interested in how, what stories they're choosing to tell and how. I'm so excited for your playthrough of Disco Elysium. Yeah, I'm I'm excited too. That that is the, just one game after another on yeah. this podcast. No chance to land and talk about any one thing really. Oh right, Everything you were gonna, is you, so you had a thing good to say about Ivor. Uh, I mean, I I really enjoyed playing um, Valhalla. I don't think narratively it was that great a game. Um, An Assassin's Creed is a you're a future person who goes back in time and inhabits assassins' bodies. Mm -hmm. And this is, and the first one was in the weird, I don't know, the Enlightenment period? What period is that supposed to be? What was the first one was uh, the Dark Ages, right? Something uh, like that. It, it's been like bouncing the, all through time. Time, and, and this and, one's uh, in Viking times. This one is in Viking time. Um, there was an Egypt one recently, and what was uh, the one where you're in Atlantis? That was the Greece one. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and like it's nonsense. It's just hot, hot <laughs> nonsense. But it's a really good um, slot machine. To keep pulling oh. in terms of an open world. There's just, there's stuff to do. There's things to collect. Go here, do this puzzle, um, kill a bunch of boars. Crap D-Day will kill his stuff. horse over and over again. I, I fell so off that series after the Revolutionary War one. I, Freedom I, cry. I just could not go climbing through the trees of New England over and over again. It got so boring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sucks. That sounds like it sucks. <laughs> I just, Video oh, games that take place in New England, by definition, sucks. Oh, look, it's Lexington and, Lexington and Concord again. I just, this town of, like, six buildings. Woo! I, I can't help but feel like somehow they made their costumes something that a, uh, like, hot gothy girl still wants to wear. Always. So. How do they get capes into... <laughs> you, it's uh, just a blue cape. It's it's blue and, and slightly, you know, colloquial. But are there bodices in the... How do you bodice that... That revolutionary. Look. I'll 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 show you. Look, <laughs> it's definitely a choice. We'll I, put those pictures up on Instagram next week, folks. I would say the costume designers uh, on these games, uh, fabulous. Yeah, they're they're really into making things that a lot of young larpers are really going to dig. Oh, there mm-hmm. are like three factories in China that just drop ship Assassin's Creed style hooded cloaks to people on Instagram. We could all use some hooded cloaks. Oh, yeah. And yeah. ones that Earth. like are really like uh lift and separate your breasts. Mm-hmm. That's a mm-hmm. uh, also Those are good. bras, Beth. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Sometimes the always pulling the pranks. Bra. You I swear to God, in some of those ones you can see like the bra strap under the the bodice. Well, mm-hmm. games are getting much more intricately designed these days. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a, so many more pixels that you can render. Yeah. And and you should be able to see that bra strap. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. It's realistic. You wouldn't want to break the verisimilitude. No, you must have verisimilitude <laughs> in your game. Of the Viking game, uh-huh. what is the least realistic thing that you feel like you end up doing in the Viking game? The thing that you're just like, I I don't even think so. We, you, I mean, between like finding alien artifacts <laughs> Uh, Thor's hammer. It's complete um, nonsense, Beth. <laughs> <laughs> like one of the things that breaks the verisimilitude is like how pervasive the nonsense of the story and the conceit and like the endless slaughter that you commit <laughs> in this land. And then you just have a civil conversation with people like while you're fucking speckled with blood. <laughs> I, I think that's actually period accurate. To the Everybody Vikings. was speckled, speckled with, with blood, blood during the Vikings. Fair. Yeah, but like in England. one person didn't get to. Wait, you could just slaughter that many people back then. 
If you were a Viking. You can yeah. still just slaughter that many people. If you're a days. Viking, yes. Oh my God. It is their religious freedom to do so. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the verisimil- verisimilitude of that game uh, that really got to me was how much language was in it. The uh, background language was just incredible. The voice acting in that was much better than the terrible, terrible Greek voice acting that was all over the place <laughs> from the previous all, one. All oh, voiced by Israelis. So that, those cutscenes were hilarious yeah, remember in the those? Greek ones. Yeah, that was an awkward time for video games when that one came out. <laughs> yeah, like three years ago. Uh, the flip side <laughs> of uh, uh, of Immersion um, was when I met Prodigy, and there was a, a mini game that was just an extended pun about being a fire starter when you met prodigy yes there you you meet some villagers in oh who right are right prodigy. in the game in the game yeah yes. yeah you're For not name dropping yeah okay. no when i was hanging out with prodigy during That's the what pandemic I'm they came over they were locked down i was locked down it was cool we social distanced and played valhalla just felt like a really hard left turn you made uh, we lived off the fat of the land. What was the one? I really liked watching you play the one about the robot dinosaurs. Uh, what one is that one? That was Horizon Zero Dawn. Um, one of many games with the worst title imaginable. <laughs> but like you every season. words together. Why it's don't cool. they just call it robotic fucking dinosaurs from the future? You have to call it three or four or five different nouns. <laughs> How many colons is in that? Uh, Horizon colon, z- colon zero semicolon done. There's at least two different fonts in it and like two or three different colors, like maybe two colors, but they're both outlined at a third color. But it's a fun game. It was um, pretty. That's, yeah. I, I it's liked... not total nonsense. Um, you were fighting uh, robot dinosaurs. Yes, but, but in the future, <laughs> Rex. It, there is a narrative that holds it all together. Yeah, the soft sci fi was not terrible on that. Uh, that yeah. had a better narrative. Then uh, I like myself a, a good post-apocalyptic story. And that's another game that like is you are intended to play that game as like a very slow, methodical hunt the dinosaur, lay these traps, then like shoot it a couple times with an arrow and like hunt these beasts to death but if you play it on easy you can just run in with the spear that only upgrades once during the whole like 45 hour long game and just stab the shit out of these guys hi keeper because you can spam dodge all fucking day uh you know one thing backtracking that i did really appreciate about valhalla was all of the um the entheogenic content Mm mm-hmm there was a lot of mushroom eating, uh, a lot of drinking psychedelic potions and visiting uh, Asgard. Uh, it's the only way you really get to Asgard. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, you're just jerking off. I might have been jerking Inhalants? off. Inhalants? I feel like inhalants is what gets you to Asgard. Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying <laughs> don't huff a bunch of paint. Like, it's a cheap way. No, no, that's what gets you to Valhalla, all shiny and chrome. Oh, Asgard. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you're you're going to want some ether for that. <laughs> um, but the king of all of the um, open world games I've played this past uh, heavy, heavy gaming season um, was Ghost of Tsushima. Um, the game directors of which are now official cultural representatives of Tsushima. Because of how happy um, that island of Japan is with the way that uh, their history was portrayed. Um, The story is cogent and uh, emotionally satisfying. And like, it's a game that when cutscenes started, I would turn my podcast off and I would pay attention to them before going back to uh, slaughtering Mongols. And this this man loves skipping a cutscene. Just like oh, yeah. two words in, he's like, got it, got it, got it. And then he's like, what is happening? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, the problem is when I am skipping um, dialogue and cutscenes, and then they just give me a choice. <laughs> <laughs> Without recapping, really, like the he doesn't last think line, the, I'm supposed to be the responding. Content to. is really important in the, playing the game. Often, it's not. 
<laughs> I've played a lot of games. I want to craft better armor. <laughs> I don't like shooting people as much as I like swinging a sword, or maybe if I'm lucky, some sort of like laser morning star. We we definitely play games for for different uh, different hits. Yeah, I mean, there's some overlap. But did, did you even play much Disco Elysium? I played about three or four hours of it, um, realized that I wanted to start over again and repeat the first day because when I had the opportunity to go to bed, I went right to bed um, mm -hmm. instead of taking some uh, amphetamines and staying up all night, which obviously is the choice that I would make if I were in the situation that I was in when I started Disco Elysium for the second time because the first time I committed suicide at the beginning of the second day. <laughs> suicide wow nice yeah uh, to prove a point um, oh that's the best reason yeah <laughs> yeah you know these fucking, you think i won't dude these fucking teamsters <laughs> did not respect me uh, <laughs> so i uh i convinced my his my partner to give me his gun because i hadn't found my gun yet and uh, and he didn't want to, but I convinced him to. And then instead of threatening them with my gun, because they all had guns, I threatened to kill myself. And then I did. And then the game was over. Yeah. So That's so some context. Work. What is Disco Elysium? Uh, Disco Elysium is a, um, a old school adventure game, like point and click style. Um, it won a bunch of game of the year awards in uh, 2019 and came out late last year with <clears throat> a, uh, I don't remember the name of the edition, but a, a new edition that has voice acting for all the uh, written parts. And mm -hmm. it is spectacular. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, the most innovative piece of uh video game storytelling that I've ever encountered. Uh, 100% of my top five games of all time. Just unbelievably fun. Uh, in, in a very different way than something like Beat Saber, which is my pick for my most fun game is fun. That's fun, like, from my, my toes to the top of my head fun. Uh, Disco Elysium is just, like, a ride. It's it's a a novel. It it's the best choose your own adventure novel ever written. It really seems to fulfill like the promise of narrative complexity of those sorts of games, like doing things at different times during the day and talking to people in a different order drastically changes the conversations you're able to have, and that was a super cool thing. Um, besides it being absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. And, and weird and wistful, uh, and macabre. very, very dark. <laughs> yeah. And, and subversive, um, mm -hmm. just a great and inexpensive. It's an indie game. So it's super cheap. Uh, you can probably play it on any computer you own. It, it takes no graphics power whatsoever. Get it, play it, enjoy, build communism. Yeah, I was a legendary revolutionary, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Maybe next time I will be. Uh, have we mentioned playing Gloomhaven? I don't think so. Uh, one thing the three of us did together during the, the long, bleak lockdown year was uh, play Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion, uh, which is not a video game. <laughs> not a video game at all. It's it's a board game. Uh, Gloomhaven is a uh, crowdfunded game that came out a few years back that takes about four years to play all the way through. God damn. Yeah, it did take a long ass time. Yeah. What we played was a, an introductory game for Gloomhaven. It, it's... Uh, like a fifth of the size at most, less than. Uh, it's designed, it's a fun standalone game, and we had a blast. It took us, what, three, four months to get through? 
And as big as that game box is, the box for Gloomhaven is fully like 65% larger than that box. It's a suitcase. An absolute steamer trunk of a game. Uh, with bo- with little boxes inside it that you can only open at certain points um, in, in the narrative of the game. Well, you know, you played it. Sorry. Oh, you want to talk about a Skinner box? Like, that? that is a game that rewards you for continuing. There, there's always a new, like weird unexpected treat on the horizon if you just play one more mission yeah it was it was fun although it usually just punched you down a couple of times and you're like fuck this i don't want to play anymore let's watch some youtube guys (laughs) yeah we did lose a lot (laughs) oh yeah you do you do lose a lot we we did but we lost together when we lost it was a group failure yeah it's a co-op game we did we lose we lost hard a couple of times and then the final dungeon we just creamed it we just absolutely murdered the very final stage true the the last stage was a cakewalk yes Weird. Uh, a fun surprise. Was not the structure of most of our... <laughs> no, it really made us feel like badasses by the end. Yeah. Usually it's pretty stressful, and if you beat whatever board you're on, you only just barely do it. You're limping along by the end of it. Yeah. It's 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 fun for me. I don't like really competitive games, and this is a game that is so complicated that you actually... And they restrict how you can speak to people during during looking at your hand and deciding what you're going to play. And you have to stay really flexible. It's just, it's it's a fun challenge where it feels like everyone's on the same side. Yeah, it's a game where you, you have to uh, coordinate and cooperate with your flexibility. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, if the Delta variant gets out of hand and we have to stay locked down oh, again. Oh, fuck you. Frosthaven, the sequel to Gloomhaven, is uh, coming out uh, hopefully in August. Wasn't Divinity that. 3 coming out? Uh, no, Baldur's Gate 3, which is by the makers of Divinity. Um, which is out in is out beta, but it's not supposed to be done by the end of this year. We'll play it when it's done. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But we'll get Frosthaven first. Okay. And we'll play that um, until we're... Uh, Dead, quite potentially. Old. Quite old. I, of the Delta variant. I, <laughs> I couldn't play Gloomhaven for nearly as long as we played Divinity. No, no, it, it does Divinity's have the fucking instant insane. reward. Gloomhaven is a slog. <laughs> and you have to constantly remember, okay, so then that's a plus one, minus two with your armor. Mm-hmm. Do you want to use that card? That's a minus three. Wait, were you poisoned already? <laughs> that's going to be another minus one. <clears throat> God, it sounds terrible when you say it like that. Yeah, but, but it is a lot of that. It is. It is a lot of that. The stakes seem so high. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when we murdered that child in the street? Beth, we murdered that child in the streets. <laughs> uh, we didn't all want to murder that child in the streets. <laughs> yeah, but it could have been some sort of monster. <laughs> and it turns out the monster was us. <laughs> We didn't get any coins or experience or nothing. No, we just murdered a child in front of its mother. Yeah. But, like, it was an ugly child. It totally wasn't a human child, but it was a sentient child. (laughs) It was some sort of hominid child. That's true. (laughs) Some sort of underclass of child. Uh, Accuracy Third is produced by Accuracy Third. I was a Viking. (laughs) I'm trying to. Oh, uh, a stupid board game that I really liked was yeah, great. <laughs> was a uh, wingspan. It's like uh, it's covered in bird facts. It's a resource management. You guys haven't played it. We I've haven't, but it. I, I think it uh, an app for it just dropped too. Oh, good, because that's another one where it's helpful to have a computer do the like what is happening. Yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> uh, wingspan is a blast. And there are so many interesting bird facts. And only like a quarter of them are like, there are only 26 of this bird left in the world. (laughs) Oh, that sucks. Yeah. The carrier pigeon. You've never seen one. (laughs) They've been dead for a while. You used to be able to knock them out of the sky with a rock. (laughs) I'm pretty sure they found one of those in like Jeff Bezos' garage or something. (laughs) Like, I think he cloned one or stole one or something. Is that what we're calling? No. Sex worker. Not pigeon. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> oh, God damn it. You actually got me. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, everybody. It's been a successful evening. <laughs> Simple.